Hi, and thank you for coming back to my channel. We are speaking about the immigration process in Canada, and we're talking uh, mostly about how you can immigrate to Canada and come to live here permanently. Uh, the question I've been asked always about working in Canada. As you know, Canada is uh, a country of uh, a big uh, territories or area. Uh, we always require employees and workers here. However, it used to be very hard to come and work in Canada. You need a lot, a lot of paperwork to be invited and come in Canada. Why? Because the Canadian system or the Canadian government always want to give priorities for Canadian people to have the opportunities to have that job. Lately, we have a shortage. Now I'm speaking as an August 2023, and we really have a shortage of uh, employees. You can find it everywhere. They're looking for people. So the Canadian government made it's easier for now, as I said, uh, to bring people from overseas to come and work here. But let's speak about the details of how you can get a contract, how not to get um, treated or, or uh, be falsified or be cheated or scammed by anybody who's putting all these uh, advertising on over internet. I saw a lot of advertising and would like to toggle that in the beginning. So if 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 you start watch looking at uh, your facebook or instagram you will see like come to canada we would like to give you a uh, work uh, offers to come and work in canada in whatever blah 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 fields and they mostly give 10 to 15 fields in these advertisings so the first trick they will say that they will give you a salary which is high so the average salary in Canada, four to six thousand. That's the average salary, guys. So if anybody offering you twenty thousand a month, know that it's a lie. You know, the prime minister himself make two hundred sixty thousand a year, like that's twenty two thousand a month. So you can't make the same. Like maybe you can if you're like highly skilled and required to to do your skilled in Canada, but Basically, that's the average. So be aware there is a lot of uh, there are a lot of websites that can tell you the average salary in this field in Canada. So you can look at that time. Then uh, they will offer you air airfare. They will offer you housing. They will offer you fooding. None of this possible. So usually the employer here do not take care of these things. They will give you your salary, and this is your own problems. So most they can give you is a health care that covers stuff like dental, visual, or stuff like that. And most of the time, it happens after a while of, of your contracts. So uh, housing, and it's, it's very rare. It's maybe in some cases in seasonal workers who come here for a season, yes, but except that, no. So... Uh, and uh, be careful of uh, the documentation. I have seen job offers coming from companies, big companies like, for example, Total for gas and uh, oil, and it's with the Gmail. Gmail, guys, like, come on, <laughs> be smart a little bit. Do your investigation about the name of the guy. Try to contact him directly. It was like, signed by the CEO, his name, I don't know the signature of whom, but the CEO, but it's a Gmail. So how come company like Total or Walmart or Amazon will send you an email from a Gmail? Doesn't make sense. Okay, so if you want to look for a job, you usually go to the Job Bank of Canada. It's called the Job Bank. It's not a bank, it's the job place. There is a lot of website, Indeed, uh, job bank, other websites, you can LinkedIn maybe. But again, you go to the re real websites and over there you can filter your search by LMIA, LMIA, Labor Market Intensive Assessment. And this is the things showing that this company has an approval to bring foreign workers. So if not, your employer who will employ you has to make this process. LMIA, it's actually approval by the uh, local ministries to approve this company to bring 
uh, employees from overseas. So basically they say this, the market is not saturated. They need, we need these people. So it's a process. I don't want to talk about it. It's for the Canadian employer and they mostly know that, but the employees come from overseas with LMIA. So if your employer have an MIA, it will make it easy for you. Then you will send, you will apply over internet from the portal. You can do it by yourself or by a consultant. You can apply for a visit, a working visa. So usually you go to visa section and what you want to do, study work or visit, you do work. So you will receive a visa. So basically, if the uh, the embassy or the VAC center in your country uh, accept your uh, visa, they will uh, send you some letters, maybe to make a fingerprints or come to make medical uh, examination if if needed, uh, and then they will ask you to send your passport. You will get the visa. Then they will send you the visa. You book your ticket and come here. When you arrive to the airport, you will have your work permit. I want to emphasize that your work permit will be received at the first port or airport you arrive into. So you will meet an officer, you will ask you where you're going, blah, blah, blah. You will show the contract, you will show your visa, he will issue you a paper. It's called a working permit. So what's the difference between the working permit and the working visa? The working permit is to allow you to work in Canada and stay legally. The working visa, it's allow you to go through borders in and out of the country. So if your visa is not valid, it does not matter your work permit is valid or not. If you want to travel to your country and come back, you have to have a valid visa, not work permit. Your work permit could be valid for two years, but your visa expired, so you need to renew your visa. This is very important to understand. This is the difference between the work permit and the visa. So basically the work permit could be closed work permit or open work permit. Closed one, it allows you to work for a certain employer or company or an institution, but the open one will allow you to work wherever you want, whatever field you can, okay? So basically, uh, legally you have to work in, in, in with with, especially if you have a closed one, you have to work with the company register in your working visa. When you arrive, you are able to apply for a Canadian uh, health card or health coverage, which is um, cover you as a Canadian, the same as a Canadian. So everything except dental and vision, massage, therapy, physiotherapy, all these stuff. But except that, if you have an emergency, if you want to see a doctor, uh, you will be treated as a Canadian. The same thing, so no, no differentiation. Uh, basically, uh, these are the important things about the working visa. And the most important questions. Does that lead to immigration? Can I have PR after working in Canada? Well, this is the half truth being told to you so most of the people say you go to work in canada for two years and you will be able to apply for the immigration this is not true okay you have to understand it it's a whole picture so after you work in canada you are able to apply for a stream in the uh, express entry however you still have in that stream to collect points and after that you can get into the pool and be draw, withdrawn from that pool if the government see that your uh, points are enough to be withdrawn. So basically, if you don't have enough points, it's useless. Yeah, you did some money, you worked here, they will tell you either you renew your work permit or you go home. I know people coming here at age 43 and they want to work two years. Yeah. They will gain 50 points maybe for, for the working experience. However, they will lose a lot for the age because after 45, you have zero for the age. You have to make your eyelids or celbic like or French test. So you have to make a language test to show your ability that you are able to speak in that language. So again, 
according to that, you will collect some points. So if you don't have the, the exam for the English or the French, you will not be able to even apply for this. So again, this is the truth. You have to have the, 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 the total score. So please, 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 before you come, somebody give you fake promises or, or half promises, I would say, go and find somebody, pay somebody $200, $300 to make a consultation with them, telling them, this is my situation. What do I have to do to get a uh, permanent residence after two years uh, of my uh, work permit, if it's in two years or three years, whatever. Yeah. So you have to know your situation before even you're leaving your country. That's my suggestion. I wish you all the best and hope to see all of you. Please subscribe to our channel. Keep me posted if you have any questions. I will try to answer them as soon as possible. Share this video with your friends and hope to see you soon here in Canada.